Hey guys, what's going on? So in this video today, I'm gonna to give you 10 tips to help you keep your roster growing and make sure you're kind of doing the most you can do each day to you know, benefit your roster, I guess you could say. So let's just get right into it. So the number one thing that you can do basically to help your roster grow is just to come in and every day do your daily, obje uh, daily objectives and get your free campaign energy. Um, a lot of people would agree with that. You get power cores from doing that. Um, you can farm gear with that. You can uh, farm character shards with that. Basically, if you do that at the minimum, I think you will see your roster grow. Um, that's pretty basic, but I think that is like the number one and utmost thing that you can do is just make sure you play. Um, if you're taking this game semi-seriously and not just playing it when you're when you're on the toilet, um, I think most people do know that, but I do just want to reiterate, just do what you can in this game. Uh, but let's move on uh, to number two. Um, I suggest that you guys get through your campaigns as soon as possible, as soon as you can. Um, that way you can farm characters so you can farm legendaries because legendaries will help you with our next tip. Um, but legendaries will basically help you in U7, in Arena, in Dark Dimension. These legendary characters will help you in Arena, U7, uh, Dark Dimensions, other campaigns. Um, they're just kind of, they're needed and, you know, they're there's a reason why they're legendaries because they do end up running one aspect of the game um and so our my tip number three is to take arena sem some semi seriously you don't need to like prioritize it or you know take it too seriously or let it ruin your life or anything like that but i would just suggest you come in and make sure you do your five battles each day if you do your five battles each day or at least do a battle and compete for you know another spot up than where you would be if you didn't compete or do the, do your battles. Um, I think that can help you grow. I typically try to get in the top 100, but I would just suggest if you can do it, get in the top 250, uh, maybe even the top 500. I think in the top 250, you will have a net benefit of power cores. And I think in the top 500, you're kind of equal with that. Um, but I would definitely suggest top 250 if you can, top 500. Um, but uh, if you're not taking it seriously, maybe you know try to. Um, I just think it the power cores and these rewards uh, the arena credits will help you get characters for you know legendaries and stuff um, but again don't let it ruin your life if you miss a battle you miss a battle it's not a big deal but just you know if you're gonna play this game seriously you have to take arena seriously as well tip number four is to go ahead and ask people like myself and other content content creators or other long-term players for help and use resources that you know other guys make or that I might make for you guys um, basically you know we've been playing for so long that we kind of not that we know best when it comes to everything, but we do kind of have a general idea of what's good where um, and how to beat things without having to invest too much gear into a character, for example. Um, you know, what where a team should be leveled up at, which is the best team, that type of stuff. So um, I would definitely suggest that because, you know, I don't personally do this, but I know there's a lot of content creators that buy characters right when they come out and they'll tell you either this character is good, this character is bad, or this character is decent. Um, and I think that's important to know because, you know, it can definitely... You don't want to over invest gear into a semi decent character when there's other characters that you should be prioritizing number five is to make a plan and stay focused um if you're working on your arena team right now make sure you stick with building your arena team if you're working on your u7 team right now make sure you stick on stick with building up your u7 team if you're working on getting into dark dimensions 4 make sure you're uh, focused on that uh, I just think it's important to whatever you're trying to build up you do that because if you build up your arena team halfway and your u7 team halfway you're not gonna get the benefit it's better to have either one really good and then go to the other when you can or uh, yeah basically that don't try to split it I would just definitely recommend you know get your arena team up you know and then focus on u7 or vice versa whichever one you prefer I also want to show this off this is how I prioritize um, things, for example. So my number one priority in this game is campaigns and dark dimensions. I kind of keep them in the same thing. And I say the gear that you need for it uh, is just basically whatever you need to beat it. Uh, so for example, in campaigns, if I'm having trouble with a node, I might go back and level up characters just slightly and just keep trying that node and see if I can beat it. Beat it, because I don't want to. I want to do the minimum I can to beat that node. Um, but for Dark Dimensions, basically, you know, the gear needed to beat it. A lot of people know you need Gear 15 to get into Dark Dimensions 4. So that's just kind of where, where it's at. But that, that's where I personally prioritize that. Then I prior prioritize my Arena team. Then my U7 team, which right now is Symbiotes. 
Then, um, yeah, with Farina and Ultimus, you just want to have the max possible gear on them. I know you can get away with uh, in Ultimus not having the max gear, but I think in Arena, having the max possible gear on your Arena characters will definitely help. For a lot of people, that's Black Order. Um, so a lot of people already have that, but I just want to let that out there. Um, then next up, after Ultimus raids, I make sure I have all my challenges three-starred, or the you know the final tier of the challenges three-star, and just whatever gear needed to beat it. If you know if you're the Blaster Challenge, for example, I would occasionally just come in and put, for, ex for example, I leveled up Negasonic a little bit um, then I would try attempt the node if I didn't beat the node I would put a little bit more gear on Negasonic and then just keep doing that until I beat it until I three start it and then I would say you need eight war defenses and ten war offenses in case you need to do refreshes on war offense make sure if you have a war defense that you use that you have a counter for it on your offense um, and I would just say gear 10 or 11 level 65 level 70 if you're free to play if you obviously spend money in this game you can take them a little bit higher but that's kind of a good stopping point um, and if you decide to build up a team later on, having them at gear 10 or gear 11, level 65, level 70, you know, it's not really too much of a gap to bring up a little bit higher. And then Gamma Raids, gear 10 or 11, level 65, level 70. I will say that's kind of changing just because there is the Gamma difficulty slider, but that's still high, how I'm prioritizing it, because right now I do have 8 war defenses and 10 war offenses, but... Um, that is just how I'm prioritizing it. So right now, the only thing I'm honestly working on is Dark Dimensions and then maybe U7. Uh, maybe building up Scream a little bit more with some bio gear. But right now, it's just Dark Dimensions for me. And then there's upkeep also at the end um, if you need if you want to build up you know your war defense a little bit better or your war offense is a little bit better. But that's basically how I prioritize it. So this is my plan, and I stay focused on it the best I can. Tip number six is to find an active alliance. You need to find an alliance that at least is attempting to 100% uh, gamma raids. That is at least attempting to, you know, get 60%, 30% in uh, Ultimus raids. Basically, if you have an alliance that has a Discord and has 24 members and good captains that are trying to recruit people, that's the, the best route to go. Just be active in that alliance and they will love you for the most part. I'm in a really good alliance where, you know, they don't require spending or anything like that. But, uh, you know, we still get a lot accomplished. We have a couple of people leave and come but it, you know it's not too much of a deal uh we get through what we need to get through and you know we're competitive in alliance war so that's all like that's all i really want that's all what i want from my alliance so i don't really care um but just find an active alliance that you know are nice dudes nice chicks whatever um number seven i would suggest that every day you come in um not for the emma frost event because it is a little bit different but every day you should come in uh when the Emma Frost event isn't active and at least hit milestone 10, just because that is 50 power cores each day that you can get from just spending, uh, I think it's 1 million gold. So, and if you're spending 1 million gold on leveling up characters, on gear, on, you know, putting T4s on characters, on whatever stuff, uh, you will see a nice little bit of progress in your roster. Um, you will, I will say you probably will need to spend a little bit more to keep keep up with where level 80 is in this game right now um, i will have a video out pretty soon when i hit level 80 and just about how much gold you need to spend each day with leveling characters when it comes to level 80 but uh if you hit that milestone 10 every day and are able to and then maybe spend a little bit more on a couple days when you have a surplus of gold i think you'll see a lot of good progress in your roster um yeah that, basically that's what i kind of started to focus on and that's where i saw the biggest jump for me at least when it came to leveling my characters um, also, you should be careful on who gets gold gear. Typically what I do, so I'm pretty much, I'm not, it's, I'm in a weird spot in this game where I am free to play, but I'm not free to play. Um, I'm not free to play anymore, but I was free to play for a long time. But for example, uh, as you can see with my yellow jacket, he's got all purple pieces on him, except for these. I think I had these for free, so that's why I put them on him. But he has all purple pieces on him, and he's level 77. Uh, same with Shatterstar, same with my long shot, same with Yelena. I'm still leveling her up. Um, basically just be careful on who gets gold gear. Um, I don't, purple gear, I have a surplus of purple gear or I have the ability to have a surplus of purple gear right now. So I don't really stress it. Um, but with gold gear, I'm very particular about what I put on characters. Um, for example, you know, not right now, but I was needing bio pieces. I was needing tech pieces. Um, and it kind of sucks when you have that drought when you're just kind of needing gold. I don't think it hurts to have, you know, a lot of like my skill military team will be gear 12, not gear 13. Um, and I think I will still be able to use my skill military team against mercs or whoever and be effective. So just be careful about who gets gold gear, especially if you're free to play, especially if you're newer. Um, yeah. And then I would say also prioritize newer characters and teams over older ones. Now, this isn't always necessarily true. For example, skill military is kind of a letdown. Um, like you should definitely go from marauders over skill military, but 
uh, when it comes to like if you have the chance of leveling up skill military or Wakandans, go for skill military. Um, I will say in skill military, Red Guardian is a really solid character, so um, you want to prioritize him over someone like Drax. Um, so basically, I think the newer characters that come out, you will have, you will be using them longer than you will be using probably past older characters, not including legendaries. Um, but I just think if you go the route of focusing, you know, every time you get a new character, you get them up to level 65. Uh, gear 10 you will get more use out of them than maybe trying to go back and level up a Wakandan or uh, You know any one of those other characters, but basically if it's not like a top five team A character on a top five team then you should probably you know, maybe go on newer characters versus older ones And then finally my last tip um, Just make sure you have fun with this game. This game can feel like a job and it shouldn't it is a mobile game It should be fun. You should you know, maybe you'll get buddies from playing this game. Maybe you you know, you'll I don't know, maybe you feel accomplishment with this game or something along those lines. Maybe you'll hit rank one in arena as free to play and that feels good. I know a couple people have done that. So, um, but basically just make sure you have fun. Um, a while back, I had a guy ask me like legendary orders and what characters, which, which characters to prioritize for legendaries and stuff. And, you know, I gave him my list and he goes, oh, so not Magneto. Um, and I was like, well, I mean, like, do you like Magneto? Do you think he's a cool character? And he was like, yeah, I, I like he's one of my favorite characters in Marvel. And I was like, well, I mean, that's that's important. I think I think it's important that, you know, you're probably playing this game because you love Marvel characters because, um, you know, you're excited about WandaVision, which is coming out. Um, you're excited about the movies when they finally come back after COVID. Um, but just make sure you have fun with this game. If you like um, I use this example a lot, but if you like the Asgardians of the Galaxy and you want Thor with Star-Lord, Rocket, Groot, and Gamora or Drax, then do that. If that's fun to you, do that. I mean, um, I have a uh, someone who in my streams constantly talks about liking Han Archer. He's probably memeing, but um, I'm probably going to build up Han Archer just for him, just because I think it'll be funny to have a Gear 13 Han Archer. Um, so make you just have fun with this game. Um, don't take it too seriously. Again, you can, you know, just do the best that you can with what you have. Look at what other people are doing. Look at what other people are not doing. Um, but yeah, that's going to do it for this video. I hope this video was helpful. Um, let me know if you have any other tips. Let me know if you disagree with any of my tips. Let me know if you think I should change my priority in this list right here. Um, I Again, I have campaigns at the top. Um, I don't really focus on campaigns just because my my roster is good enough to get through all, all the campaigns pretty easily. Um, but I would just say, you know, it's, it's up there for new characters or newer, newer players. So Again, let me know what you think of this video. Thank you guys for watching. On this channel, I do guides, I do giveaways, I do orb, op orb openings, I do all sorts of Marvel Strike Force stuff. So make sure you're subscribed, hit that like button. Thank you guys for watching, and I hope you have a great day. Bye.